The following program was taped in front of a live web audience and has been edited down for timing. It contains mature content, explicit gaming coverage, and a girl. This episode of The Game Show is brought to you by Netflix and Gamefly. to the show. I am Jim Vistante. So excited to have you guys here with us this evening. We are live. Um, we are going to be, uh, yeah, we're drinking again. So, Good luck. yay. <laughs> it's much better than what happened last week, which we will never speak of again. I can't even see the, I'm going to call it the N-word. I can't even see the N-word like typed out. It's so gross to me right now. Oh. Nugget. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Nicole, everybody, and I'll be in the Stick M room. And this week, I am taking on the stimulus pack from Modern Warfare 2. And, of course, Top 7, Wall or 7. So uh, that's what I will have for you guys tonight. Gweeds. I want to shout out Mr. Pooney. Oh, That's why I'm here. I want to soak up the Gweedsness. This is Mr. Pooney's first time watching live, so welcome. And the Fresh TM is saying the TGS does what TGS wants, and I think you guys are going to see that today. I am going to be talking about WarioWare DIY for the DS, uh, which is kind of new. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, we got an interview coming up with a couple of chess boxers. So if you've never <laughs> heard about this sport, Check that shit out. Here's to the weekend. Cheers, it's Friday. Let's try this again. Bang! Oh. All right. Let's get started with a little bit of combo, some quick hits of news that you might have missed this past week. Yes! Yeah! Starting off with Kojima defends in-game ads. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is finally coming out. When it comes out, it will have a lot of in-game advertising. Um, we got some footage of this, boss? We got some, some media? What kind um, of advertising? Lots. Hideo Kojima, the man who's behind the series, spoke uh, at the game's completion ceremony about the amount of cross-promotion in the game. This is a story that we found on Kotaku.com if you want to go there for the full rundown. Pepsi and Mountain Dew can and will be used as health recovery items. Some real-life <laughs> Mountain Dew cans and like have a redeemable life. code that will give Snake an in-game Mountain Dew shirt. Snake can also eat Doritos and apply Axe deodorant. Well, this is brilliant. Uh, Kojima said, regarding the collaborations, I have one reason for doing them. It is because I want to surprise the players. If the surprise and freshness were lost, I would stop the collaborations. It's different from Hollywood-style merchandising. It's not the first time they had the iPod in uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. And There'll that be iPods out. in this, too. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, a Farmville user spends over 900 pounds uh, in debt on Farmville. Uh, that's thirteen thousand or one thousand three hundred dollars in U.S. money. Close. Uh, yeah, and a twelve-year-old boy in the U.K. He wiped out his own savings account, which good for him for being twelve and having a savings account. Uh, <laughs> I don't even him. have a savings account. <laughs> bad for him for spending that and then moving on to his mother's account, and uh, he racked up over nine hundred and five pounds. Um, over 900! Of, of things that you can't even interact with. You buy a house that you can't go in, you can buy grass that you watch grow. <laughs> the most expensive um, clip art ever. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> impressive. Um, uh, Zingia, the company that is responsible for, for, for Farmville, will not reimburse any of this and instead suggests that parents better password protect their computers. Uh -oh. So they don't have no sympathy. Um, Wait, Hamilton was saying that's a fake story from Kotaku. Did you get it? It was on uh, the Guardian UK. Oh, so did the Guardian UK get fucked up too? Who knows? We are moving on. We got uh, EA is all over the iPad. iPad's out. They already got new games. They put Scrabble out. Here's the thing about it. It's kind of cool you can interact with it, but they showed off this thing where you can put an iPad down and everyone can use their iPhone or I, uh, iPod as their like shuffleboard. <laughs> <laughs> Scrabble costs 10 bucks, people. That's the most expensive Scrabble set I've ever seen. They also announced Mirror's Edge, which has got 14 levels and a multiplayer mode. Um, Command and Conquer 3, which I would want to play. I mean, it's got the um, the three finger, uh, I guess the shocker multi-touch going on there. <laughs> um, and Need for Speed Shift and Tetris, which kind of yawn about that. I mean, it seems like every time a system launches, you need a racer and who cares. And you need Tetris. 
I don't Let's need Tetris. Yes, you do. And these games are going to cost like $15. Uh, I guess like the standard for uh, these apps is usually like 10 so that's a bit higher. EA continuing to raise the bar in something. <laughs> or at least raise the price. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, EA. All right, Ca uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 fan video. This is awesome. They made a fan film. It's about a seven minute film. We got some footage of this that we want to show you guys. Uh, they basically made it for around 200 bucks plus a lot of love. So it's, I mean, one of my favorite games of the past year. <laughs> so I was excited for this. Oh, I'm um, gonna take a cue from the Rev3 forums. Slash sarcasm. Oh yeah, that's right, slash sarcasm. Or slash S, to be totally hip. Which, this is really cool. Uh, and it shows people really like this game. People love this game. The, the amount of time that they must have put into this, the production values are really high. It's just a really nice fan service. Aliens 300C, the ghost mask looks fake and gay. <laughs> okay, or not. Uh, I like it, and I like this shot where the guy sprays blood all over the place. The blood looks like the Call of Duty blood. It's almost so cool looking that it, it almost makes you think that it's viral marketing that they paid for and are lying to us about. I know it's, it's an unofficial good. everywhere, but who knows. All right, rounding this one out. Why am it's I me. here? It's me. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, Halo. New uh, information on the Halo and Gears movies. Um, while at last week's uh, MI6 conference, uh, the head of a uh, creative director of 343 Studios, Frank o Frank O'Connor, um, gave his input on the potential for a Halo movie. And he said, basically, and in, not basically, in quotes, "We're going to make a movie when this is when the time is right." And so the Halo movie, it's inevitable. It's going to be made. They're just kind of buying their time because what he says is that we have the numbers to do a movie, um, but it'll change everything. It'll change marketing, and it'll change the demographics, and it's going to, it's gonna be a, a completely new direction for the series. So it's gonna happen, just we're gonna have to wait. And then on the Gears of War movie front, there are some, uh, some production delays, according to some insiders at New Line Cinema, who was taking on the project. Apparently the $100 million budget's been cut, the story's been cut, the director's gone, and uh, minor setbacks. It's minor setbacks. Minor setbacks, <laughs> but uh, that's potentially still coming too, so we'll see. But Gears 3 got sort of announced. So we'll, sort of announced. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> Death Spanks, Ron Gilbert has exited Hothead, but no worries, no worries. He's been working on a game called Death Spank. These uh, Vancouver-based devs, they, you might know them, they made the Penny Arcade downloadable games. Um, Ron Gilbert, of course, famous for Ma Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island. Um, he's left because his work is done. He'll come back for PR and marketing. But basically, this game, it's a combination of Diablo and Monkey Island played in a cylindrical world. Wow. Um, I don't see any spanking going on. Oh, uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of death spanking. His goal was to make Death Spank the most awesome game ever made, quote unquote, and have it win a Nobel Prize. <laughs> um, <laughs> the early word out of Stockholm is that Death Spank is neck and neck with some string theory dweeb. <laughs> Eleven dimensions my ass. <laughs> Thank you, Ron Gilbert. We love you. I cannot wait to fucking play this game. I'm serious, like it's just like, it's great to have these guys back and that they can jam out for a couple years with a cool studio, make something great, and now we can move on. And I cannot wait to play it. It's been like a year and a half, two years in the making. Let's bring it, let's see it. And that's Combo! <laughs> Gamefly! It's the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles. Gamefly members can rent one to four games and can keep them for as long as they like. There's mine. I got, I brought them. And once you're done playing a game, just send it back and Gamefly sends you the next available game in your queue. <laughs> which is a fancy British word for list. Is it really? Yeah. Wow, Corey I L. learned something. Corey L says he's been with Gamefly for three years and if you don't have it, the terrorists win. So yeah. if you really like the game you're playing, you can simply go to Gamefly, click keep it, and the game is yours for a discounted price and they're even gonna send you the box and the manual the game show fans do get a 15 day free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com slash the game show. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of nerd on the street. This week we want to talk about what happens when there isn't a big new AAA super awesome title coming out. You know, we try to frame the show around what you guys are playing or what you guys want us to talk about. This week there wasn't much. There was some DLC, there were some portable things. So what do you guys do? What happens when there really isn't the hot new game to buy or you don't have the money? Do you go and play something you haven't beaten? Do you replay an old classic? Do you just go outside? No. <laughs> oh, no, the answer what? is no, we do not. Although I did tan today, if you guys noticed. Oh, yes. Jay Woo! Kim, Jay Kim's got a suggestion, masturbation. Sure. That's okay. That always works. That's cool. How long does that work for you, Nicole? I'm sorry, what was that? How long does masturbation hold you over from gaming? That's not something that's appropriate for you to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, though, Queens. I, I and the fans uh, appreciate your effort. Just like how many times a week? Like one blink for like five? Oh my God! Two blinks? <laughs> 
That's so inappropriate. Uh, um, I think I saw about eight blinks. There's like eight blinks. <laughs> Bizarre wrote in the Rev3 forum says he plays a game called League of Legends, which is a free online game um, inspired by Defense of Ancients, which was that custom map for Warcraft 3. It's free, and he's wasted hundreds of hours in it. So that's what he does. Altoid05 goes achievement hunting, which is interesting. I'm never, I've never really been much of an achievement whore. I, I think I have like maybe, what, like 3,000 I have how points? many? 14,325, <laughs> not that I'm counting. Oh, uh, well, the BCD is replaying Shadow Complex <laughs> and Bioshock 2 and playing Mass Effect 2. Tom K Video is saying he goes back to the SNES. The N64, the Wii Virtual Console to him. That's weird Mwah. that when there's no games coming out, then he goes back to Nintendo. Nicole, talk to me about what you played this week. So this week, I took on Modern Warfare 2's uh, DLC, which was a stimulus pack. It's a package of maps. Um, for those of you who don't know, Infinity Ward's game, Modern Warfare 2, just it's dominating still. It's still like one of the number one games being played. Probably, if you are a fan of this game, you probably already have the maps. But for those of you who don't know, the map, co map pack costs 1,200 MS points, which is about $15. M Mr. Poon said it's version. not out for the PS3 yet, and the uh, oh, sausage is calling it useless. Yikes. Um, I wouldn't say it's useless. I mean, if you can play it, there's a use. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for immediately I couldn't buy it because you can't buy 1,200 MS points. You have to buy 1,500. So immediately you're spending more money than $15, and that pissed me off to start with. Oh, there was a lawsuit about that. We talked about that a few weeks ago. There was a class action lawsuit about it's that very fair. thing. It's not fair. Yeah, it's not. I'm Nicole, not just so you money. know, Jay Kim is saying that you stimulate his package. Um, that cost you fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But uh, well, yeah, times are tough, guys. I'll take what I can get. All right. Damn, so. you're cheaper than the strippers we tried to get in here tonight. <laughs> but doing more. Spoiler <laughs> alert, Queens. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Two weeks. Back in two <laughs> weeks. Uh, back in two weeks. Back on topic. The stimulus pack has already sold two point five million Holy downloads. Holy jeebus. One million in twenty four hours. You guys, that's impressive. Uh, there are five new maps, which sounds great, but until you realize only three are actually new. Two of them are Crash and Overgrown, which are maps from Modern Warfare. Like Green four. package. And Green they're, they're not upgraded, nothing. They're just nothing? exactly the same. At least when like Gears put them in, they were like Evolved and other multiplayer and games. And free. Do yeah, that's, yeah, and free. Very good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's that difference of $15. It's $15. Um, the old maps haven't been upgraded at all. Um, one of the, and for me, one of the biggest selling points in buying new maps is that they haven't been memorized yet. You know, I have I have just as much a chance of knowing this map as everybody else. And when you play the maps that were old maps, it's pretty obvious that these guys play the old Modern Warfare and know exactly where to camp and know exactly where to kill me. And I mean that kind of just takes away the fun of the newness. Wait, when you were playing, right? You couldn't even you didn't even play in like the public rooms. You went into a private room. Yeah, because if you want, if you buy the stimulus pack, you pay your fifteen dollars, and if you want to pay play just those maps, you have to play in the public chat. You can't what? stay in your own party. And it took a grand total of like four seconds before they were like, oh, a girl's in the room. Is that a girl or a twelve year old boy? Get back in the kitchen, make me a sandwich. Oh my God, get a better insult. It's two thousand ten. Motif seventy three makes a good point. Point. Fifteen dollars? That's a whole month of GameFly. And you know what? Oh. <laughs> Better spend, my friends, on the GameFly. Is it worth the fifteen bucks? No. The bottom line is you're only getting three new maps and two old maps for fifteen dollars when most games are giving you maps for free. Mass Effect 2! That's I right. love Bioware. We love Bioware. But you know what? I'm not so sure that I'm sold. On uh, on Kasumi. Wow. Kasumi Stolen Memory just came out. It is the most recent bit of DLC for Mass Effect 2, and this one you got to pay for. This one was not like the uh, the what was that one called? Fire Firewalker. Firewalker. But I like to call it uh, Hammer Cannon. Uh. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> Hammer Cannon. I like that much better. <laughs> it's not what it's called though. So look. So this just came out. It's a new character that you can get to join your party. She's basically a new squad member, and she is an assassin and she loves stealth. And she actually has this really cool move where she will stealth herself, she'll go, like, she'll disappear, and then she'll show up behind the dude that you're attacking, and she'll just nail him and kill him, and it's actually a really cool effect. But other than that, I kinda, I mean, I'm a little disappointed in this DLC. I'm a little disappointed. How come? Tell me why. Right. What's it missing? 
that you it's, wanted. Okay, so I was excited because here's the setup of the game uh, of this DLC is you get like you have to go to a party and it's very James Bond. Like she gives you a character to play and you dress up very nicely and you kind of have to infiltrate this party and this guy that's having this party and steal something out of his vault. Well, I like that. I like using the conversation system to open yes. up different possibilities. I agree. It's not just about like talking to someone, it's about interrogating, espionage, acquiring information. Dun, however, dun, dun, however, dun, dun, they didn't dun, use it to its full dun, capabilities. Dun, dun. Now, those of you that have played Mass Effect 2 know that there is a part in the game where you have to meet this character at a bar, you have to make sure that you say the right things to her. Basically, you have to say the right things to her to make sure that you get the outcome that you want and you don't die and I feel like that's where Bioware dropped the ball on this one. One of the first things she says to me is like, hey, if things go right, you might not even have to fire a shot at all. And I was like, oh shit, that sucks because I love violence. <laughs> one of the things I love about Mass Effect is to go in guns blazing. I don't want to talk my way through a situation. I want to go in there guns gross. blazing. <laughs> even so, you're still going to put all your attributes to like charisma, to, to conversation. You can't yeah, do it anymore. Course. There's no charisma in Mass Effect 2. That's true. That's true. You still want to talk a lot. Yeah, so you go, you infiltrate this guy's party. It's a little bit too easy, like I said, to get to the espionage part. And then, of course, comes the shooting. The new character, Kasumi, she's really cool. Uh, she has that really awesome Queen attack where she disappears and she shows up behind no? the character and kills them. Nobody but else? other than that, it's just like, I didn't really get much out of this. DLC. What was Would that? I buy it again? Yes. <laughs> Wait, you yes, buy it again? Bioware holds me by the balls and they know it because <laughs> they are the best studio out there. Ever. But I wish they would, I wish they had done more with it. WarioWare DIY. Have you guys forgotten about your DS? Please do not. This is a really fucking awesome game. I have not played a Wario ga WarioWare game since um, the first one that came out with the DS. I skipped the one that was like the silly photo one. Um, it continues to be one of the most subversive products on the Nintendo systems, platforms, whatever. Seriously, it's a game full of micro games that are all like essentially quoted as crappy. You know, they're really short and they're really fun. Um, the thing about WarioWare DIY is it's a game that um, I can prep on the toilet and I like that. <laughs> because it's a portable. That's the image we Gross. all were waiting for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not a DSi exclusive, and that's where you get into some of the pros and cons about this game. It's a game that was kind of, um, it doesn't take advantage of anything the DSi has. It doesn't use a camera. It only uses the microphone for some stuff. And it's just really like a regular DS game, which is kind of weird because it's coming on like the eve of the DSi XL launch. <laughs> and um, the thing How about many letters are going to be on there? DSi XL, yeah, yeah, it's, it is getting DSi a little... XL 3D Max to the to the major. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is is that really terminology? I think so, though. <laughs> All you need is a wireless connection for this game. But basically, the deal with it is, it comes with like 90 micro games, but you don't really care about that because you're going to make your own. This is a game that enables you to make games, um, short songs, records, comics. It's kind of like Mario Paint. Mario hmm. Paint. <laughs> um, I'll slap you, sir. It is Mario, Mario Paint. It's okay. a me. What's cool about it is you can download the um, WiiWare Showcase, and these games can all be ported to the Wii to be played with everyone. What that means, unfortunately, is that you can um, all the input is relegated to tapping. This game has one of the highest TTP factors of any game I've played recently. Oh, I'm recently. sorry, Guiz. What is TTP? Can you elaborate? TTP is time to penis! Yay! Duh. Any game that gives you user-created content, you gotta see how quickly you can get a penis into it. And I mean, I'm telling you, five minutes into this game, it's like, draw me a bad guy! And I'm like, great! And I drew a dude, and he's got a giant cock, and then I <laughs> shot the shit out of him! <laughs> so yes, buy, we want. This is a, this is a buy. This is a total buy if you're interested. But it's a game that I've heard a lot of people say, you're only going to get what you put into it out of it. It's like Scribble Knots. If you don't have a big vocabulary... It reminds not, me of Scribble Knots. You're not going to get a lot out of it. You have to like building games. But um, maybe even if Little Big Planet was too much for you, this is cool because you're building micro games in like three seconds. Hey, Justin is saying shots, 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 shots. You cannot. So we're going to do another you shot guys. only because it's Justin. Because he's Justin. the original Justin. And you guys. while we do a shot, Brian is going to talk to us about Netflix. Interns, give us a shot. Guys, it's Brian here. Let's talk Netflix. Get movies and your favorite TV shows delivered right to your door. Sign up now and start streaming all of Netflix amazing content right to your PC or Mac. 
You can even watch right on your TV with your gaming console. Stream as much stuff as you want and keep the DVDs as long as you want and never worry about paying a late fee. You can support the game show just by signing up for a free trial. You get an entire month free when you go to netflix.com slash game show. If you don't use our URL, you'll only get the two week trial. So make sure to use ours for the full month. Back to you guys. Nicole! Woo! You gonna have it? Woo! Shot number four, five? five. Yeah. Five. Is that really Cheers. A power out? Mm. Oh, Nicole. They want it, they're just not typing it. Nicole, we got a top seven list. We what got is the it top, about? The top seven types of DLC. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right, number seven. Number seven is armor. Um, people love to update their characters, even if it's totally superficial. Like in the alternate appearance pack released for Mass Effect 2 a few weeks ago, um, some appearance DLC actually has a purpose, like the uh, Blood Dragon armor for, de for um, Dragon Age. Yeah, they um, really made you work for that. Yeah, shit. sometimes it doesn't, like the goggles you get in Mass Effect. <laughs> no purpose. Oh my god, you have goggles now. Download. Goggles is one of those great words that sounds doesn't sound like a word the more you say it. Number six! <laughs> <laughs> Weapons! Um, if you want to add some life to your shooter, then simply add a new gun. Hell, add a lot. <laughs> if you want to add some life to your game, all you really have to do is add a few guns or gold plate them, like there's a word it with the lancer and the hammer burst. There it is! Yeah, that's, a, that's a locust gun. Do you want to know? <clears throat> Bless you. you. Say it. Bless you. Excuse me, Mom. Oh. Number five is maps. If you want to, uh, shooters are repetitive. Um, nothing makes a shooter boring than like having to play the same map over and over again. And the novelty is, you want new maps, you get new experience. You don't know where to camp anymore. It's a, it's a whole new type of play, you know, way to play the game. Halo Three has new maps. Gears of War Two has new maps. Obviously, Modern Warfare 2, we talked about earlier, has a stimulus pack. Battlefield Bad Company 2 has VIP maps, which are free. Did you pay attention, Activision? Maps. Free. When you're drunk, maps is a funny word. <laughs> it's only funny to you, Jim. But you know what? It brings some happiness, and that makes me happy. Some mappiness? Yeah! Uh, number four, characters. Uh, a fun character is always a great way to add some longevity on your game. Got to jump in, Jack Hunter. Maps backwards is spam. Oh, Think about shit. it. My mind. Think is about it some other me. time because c games like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 lets you download new characters like Psylocke and Carnage and the Black Panther, and that adds new moves, new ways to you know play the story. Um, Mass Effect 2 has Kasumi and Zaid, and those. Those downloads let you play the game in a completely different way. <laughs> Number <laughs> three! <laughs> Missions. Um, after you beat a game, it's hard to find reasons to go back and keep playing it. Um, usually these missions, uh, into packs are a few hours ad added uh, grinding, level grinding, level grinding. Get and some, uh, says you're really hot when you know comic book character. Yeah. And, um, and when you say grinding. Both those times, so am I double hot? Yeah. Say grinding <laughs> again. Grinding. <laughs> One more time. Grinding. Uh, Assassin's Creed 2, Borderlands, Resident Evil 5, Saints Row, all those games offer downloadable packages that let you have more missions. Just expand the game's <laughs> life. Number two is expansions. Um, after you beat a game, sometimes it's hard to find a reason to go back to it. But with games like Grand Theft Auto 4 and um, Dragon Age, you can have Awakenings and Origins, and you have uh, Ballad of Gay Tony, you have The Lost and the Damned. These add hours and hours onto your game, and it just, it's just the bee's knees, guys. It's the bee's knees! The bee's knees! She did! What are you, 75? Yes. <gasps> Number one. Free. Yeah, I don't know what. Uh, when push comes to shove, I don't really care if you're giving me a map or a gun or a character or whatever. If it's free, like that Mass Effect 2, Hammerhead uh, DLC, Hammer. just, just Cause 2, um, Bad Company 2 had VIP DLC. Um, it's all free. I don't really care what it is. If it doesn't cost me any like IRL money, in real life, <laughs> IRL money. I, will, I will download it and I appreciate that. So free is my favorite kind of DLC. <laughs> I want to introduce you to Andrew McGregor and William Dorman. They are professional chess 
boxers. What? Whoa. Whoa. Yes. What? Whoa. yes. In his house. So first question, guys. If you guys have known, you know Drew. You might have seen him here. He's Captain Africa. Guys, tell me, what the fuck is chess boxing? Um, chess boxing is a motherfucking new sport invented about five <laughs> years ago. It's actually an adaptation to a graphic novel uh, written by a Serbian expatriate living in France. Which the title translates to Dark Equator. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's one round of chess followed by one round of boxing. Brian, show some video. By chess. This Checkmate is. or knockout wins. Checkmate or Ooh. knockout. How cool does that sound? This is an really actual cool. sport. Where is it like popular, Drew? Um, there's a club in Berlin, London, Siberia, and William Dorman and I are the number one and two members of the Los Angeles Chess Boxing Club. Hell no, yeah. No shit. And you guys just had, uh, you just had your first match here in America. Yeah, we did an exhibition round uh, about six weeks ago at Fortune Gym in Hollywood. Um, and that was the first ever sanctioned bout in the history of North America. Broken Sausage says that's a great tagline, checkmate or knockout. Oh, well, it's great because it's true. <laughs> it's a lot of fun too, yeah. 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 <laughs> So wait, wait, how did you guys get started in this? Oh, uh, well, I first saw a flyer for it in Budapest about, I don't know, four years ago. It was just on a <laughs> wall, and then the idea stuck with me. Um, and then when I was in Africa about two summers ago, a friend of mine who's an evolutionary biologist, who I always beat at chess growing up, uh, oh. sent me a Wikipedia link, and he said, you could be their Muhammad Ali. And I was like, by crikey. So when I finished graduate school, I had eight to 12 hours a week to Drew, to learn how to beat people up. True, the chat room doesn't believe this. They think it's a joke. No, it's, it's no, quite it's true. No, it's for real. You just Leafly had your first so. fight and you won, right? Yeah. yeah. So I won um, by how, checkmate in the fifth round. Hell yeah, you put Woo! checkmate. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, All right. So Bravo. that is incredible. How do people get started if they're interested in chess boxing? Where uh, do they well, go? Well, you could go to our website, lachessboxing.com, and then you can send me an email. I started training people out of my garage. Bill, you are also a part of the chess boxing scene. <laughs> you're a little bit smaller than Drew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so a, you're, you're, you're different weight classes. Weights. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a middleweight, and Drew's uh, the heavy. And chess boxing is nice because it's not like boxing. There's so many weight classes from like cruiserweight and featherweight and welterweight and etc. Well, the weights go by boxing, not chess ability, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's kind of a little, little both, you know. It's uh, you try to try to have fair matchups, but it's it's a real honest sport too. Like boxing, it's you versus somebody else. There's no dice involved. You don't have a teammate you can blame anything on. And same thing with chess. It's you kind of versus somebody else, and you got to be able to make those good decisions while getting punched in the head. It's kind of like beautiful in that way. Drew, stand up. Little. I don't know. I don't know if you can appreciate this. <laughs> Drew is like six. How tall are you, dude? Does anybody tall. want a peanut? Uh, I'm six ten, two eighty. <laughs> yeah, Drew is like. Yeah, he's huge. Bill, wait. wait. Both of you stand up together. Yeah, yeah. You guys can't yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> Drew tall. is huge, you guys. <laughs> Drew has a giant penis. You know what? I'm gonna disconnect Please myself no. for a second. I'm gonna disconnect my mic, and I'm gonna go get a, a, a giant hug He's from Drew. It. Pick him up. <laughs> wow, you are huge. You are a big man. Drew's like a foot above the ground. <laughs> we will not be with you next week. Next week we have off, but follow. Uh, come back to us the following week. Uh, I think we're gonna be starting to talk a little bit of Street Fighter. Stripper. Stripper and, fighters? And oh my god, there might be a sexy surprise for you. Oh, I just wanna say Buckbeak. Found it, Leah Dama requesting one last F-bomb. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're in the game show. We'll see you in two weeks. Good night. Hang out. We're gonna be gaming live. I did tan today, if you guys noticed. Oh, yes. Thank <laughs> you.